to the Beach Bum Bookworm. I am Tiffany. My channel is all about cozy mysteries and romance. And today I'm starting a new spotlight. Oh, I'm so excited. I am starting a new spotlight and cozy. It will be needle crafts. So sewing, quilt, crochet, knitting, anything else that might fall into that. I'm so excited because it feels like it's been a very long time since I've done a Spotlight and Cozy video, and I absolutely love these, although my own TBR grows incredibly when I do them. I hope that this topic excites you. I have many more topics to come. Let me know which of these you read, which of these you're excited about, if there's a Spotlight you wanna see. Anything else that you wanna talk about down there in the comments is the place to do that. On your way down to comment, don't forget to stop and hit the subscription and the notification bell because that's going to tell you when I put out new videos each and every single week. All right, let's get to it. We're spotlighting cozies, needlecraft cozies in three, two, one, go. This seems like a great place for my weekly cozy announcements before we jump into this. So... My first announcement is we are doing lives on Monday, reading sprints on uh, Mondays just for the next few weeks. Um, my schedule is kind of wonky because it constantly changes. Um, so right now for the next couple weeks, I am off at a decent hour on Monday. So I want to do some reading sprints. These will be, uh, it, let's call them intense reading sprints. So our Saturday Cozy Mystery Live Chats, Killing Time with Cozies, is a lot of chatting, and y'all know I love to chat, but I want these to be more focused on the reading and less chatting. So if you join us, it'll be at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Cozy will be on here with me, and if anybody else wants to join, you're more than welcome to join hosting, and I hope we see everyone there. It's a great way to get some reading done, so there's that. The next announcement is the 17th, which is this next Saturday, we're doing our last knockout. All right, so our knockout theme this month was Wild Card. We are reading The Whole Cat Caboodle right here by Sophie Ryan. This is my pick. It is a second chance cat mystery series. She owns like a thrift shop and then there's also a like animal theme. Super excited about it. Cozy's pick is right here. It is Murder at the PTA by Lee Hollis. Oh, I love everything Lee Hollis writes, so super excited about that one. So on the 17th, we're going to be discussing those, voting on our favorites from those two books. And then the exciting part about the 17th is this is our last knockout. So whichever is the winner of this knockout between those two books will face off against our last month's winner and then that winner will face off against our first two round winner first two rounds winner which was books can be deceiving by Jen McKinley for our ultimate knockout champion so excited about that our book club is the following Saturday at 4 p.m so normally our lives start at 5 Monday that live will start at 6 30 I know I said that but I just want to make sure that I put emphasis on that because I won't be home at five o'clock so I gotta start it later but our Saturdays normally start at five except for the Saturday that we do book club we do that at 4 p.m. so on 4 p.m. that's July 24th I believe it's the next Saturday after the 17th whatever that would be I think it's the 24th we are discussing our book club pick which is The Uninvited Corpse right here by Deborah Senefelder I remembered the title and the author y'all I know normally I flake out on the, the author of that Super excited to talk about that one. Have not read it yet. I will be reading it soon. Sounds like a lot of fun. It's a food blogger series, so can't wait for that. I think that is all the announcements. Hope I'm not forgetting anything. Of course, I will say the very last thing, which is join our Discord if you love Cozy Mysteries. It's the Killing Time with Cozies Discord. I will put the link in the description below. Please note that the link constantly changes, so I'm always trying to update it. But if you get a link that's invalid, message me. I will, I will update it as soon as I see the message. 
but somebody is always on there chatting about cozies. I wanna say always because of time changes and people, some people on our Discord don't sleep, I think. I'm not sure about that, but it seems like they don't. That won't be me. If you're talking on there past 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm probably not gonna see it till the next morning because I'm asleep. <laughs> Maybe 9.30. 9.30. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a wild child. So, um, but somebody is always on there. Join that. All right, now let's get into it. We're looking at Spotlighting Cozies. I did, I think, A through G because there's not as many as I thought there was, which is really sad because I love needlepoint cozies. All right, the first one is the Chloe Hobbs Paranormal Mystery Series by Barbara Bret Breton. It says the main character is Chloe Hobbs. She is half human, half sorceress, and she is the owner of Sticks and Strings, a knitting shop in Vermont. I love books that place, take place in Vermont, by the way, so I'm kind of excited about this one. So I'm not a huge paranormal fan, but I always give it a shot because sometimes cozies aren't as paranormal. They're, they're, I can handle them. And if I can't, then, you know, they're just not for me. But I'm totally checking this one out. So the first book is called Casting Spells. It is right here. It says Sugar Maple. I love the name of the town. It's in Vermont. It's called Sugar Maple. That is so cute. Looks like any other Vermont town. But is it? It's inhabited with warlocks, sprites, vampires, and witches, and an ancient secret. And Chloe Hobbs, owner of Sticks and String, a popular knitting shop, has a big secret too. She's a sorcerer's daughter in search of Mr. Right, and she found him in Luke McKenzie, a cop investigating Sugar Maple's very first murder. Bad news is he's 100% human, which could spell disaster for a normal future with a paranormal woman like her. Four books in that series. That sounds adorable. The next one is the Threadville Mystery Series by Janet Bolin. The first book is called Dire Threads. It is right here, and I love that cover. Oh, my gosh, that cover is amazing. So the, Janet Bolin is also Ginger Bolton, and I did not know that. I mean, I knew it very recently. I mean, it, I didn't figure it out, like, this week when I was researching it, but I didn't know it until I was going to be inter, um, interviewing Ginger Bolton last month, and now I'm so excited to check this one out because I love her Do Deputy Donut series. So this one, first book, Dire Threads, to show it to you, it says, Willow is anxious to see her embroidery shop succeed. And while In Stitches is a hit with tourists, the town's zoning commissioner, Mike, isn't exactly a fan. After denying Willow's plan to renovate the charming cottage behind the shop, he attempts to have it knocked down for an ATV trail. Furious, Willow picks a fight with him, and when Mike turns up dead in her yard, Threadville's newest resident becomes a prime suspect. Five books in that series. Yeah, when, you know, you have a public argument, and then the person ends up dead like a few hours later, even that, you know, it, it usually looks bad. Yeah. The next one is the Black Sheep Knitting Mystery Series by Anne Canadio. The... Main character in this is Maggie. She is the owner of the Black Sheep Knitting Shop in Massachusetts. The first book is called While My Pretty One Knits. It's right here. It says, follow a group of women as they discover the depths of their friendship when a murder rocks their peaceful Massachusetts town. The Black Sheep Knitters, Maggie, Lucy, Dana, Suzanne, and Phoebe meet once a week without fail, sharing the varied and colorful schemes of their lives as much as knitting tips, recipes, and small town gossip and creating an intricate, durable pattern of friendship. This sounds adorable. Now, a shocking murder has peaceful Plum Harbor, Massachusetts in knots, and the black sheep women must herd together to protect one another from a scandalous frame-up. Oh, my goodness. Eight books in that series. I feel like I've read one of those oh, quite a while ago. I need to look on Goodreads, although my Goodreads is not exactly the most reliable. It's more reliable than my memory, so... I gotta go with it. <laughs> but I feel like I've read one of those, but maybe not. There was some needle craft series that I've that I've read quite a while ago that I did not finish and I enjoyed them. So I need to figure out which ones those are and get back to them. 
So the next series is one of my all time favorites. I'm gonna give you a few seconds. If you are not new here, you should be able to figure this out. Five. Any guesses? It's the Southern Sewing Circle series. I know it wasn't much of a drum roll as if you're not new around here because y'all know how much I love this series. It's by Elizabeth Lynn Casey. The first book is called So Deadly. There are 12 books in it. This is one that is probably in my top five. I don't know what the rest of my top five would be, but I promise you it might be in my top three. I, I, I love it. The main character is Tori Sinclair. She's a librarian and she is the member of a sew, uh, sewing circle. It takes place in South Carolina. So the first book says, ever since she moved to Sweetbriar, South Carolina, librarian Tori Sinclair has been the talk of the tiny town. But she's been busy trying to settle into work, winning over the sewing circle, and trying to forget her cheating ex. That she hasn't had time to base together a pillow, let alone mind local gossip. Then she finds the hometown sweetheart dead at her back door. Everyone believes a police investigator who's just fixin' to link Tori to the murder and a love triangle gone bad. To clear her name, Tori will have to rely on her new sewing sisters and stitch together the truth or be darned. Oh, I wish I could go back and read that for the first time and enjoy it the way I would the first time I read it. And I don't mean that if I read it again, I would enjoy it less. I mean that like getting to experience it for the first time because oh my god it's so good all right the next one is the knit and nibble series by peggy Earhart. the first book is called murder she knit it is right here i just recently read this because this was one of our knockout books the main character is pamela she is a widow and her daughter just left for college so she's an empty nester she works for a craft magazine and she starts a knitting club Pamela is hosting the next Knit and Nibble meeting and can't wait to liven up her otherwise empty home with colorful yarn, baking, and a little harmless gossip. <laughs> she even recruits Amy Morgan, an old friend who recently moved to town as the group's newest member. But on the night of the gathering, Amy doesn't show. Not until Pamela finds the woman dead outside with a knitting needle stabbed through the front of her home handmade sweater. Someone committed murder before taking off Amy's knitting bag, and Pamela realizes that only she can spot the deadly details hidden in mysterious schemes. Eight books in that series. I will be continuing it. I gave the first one like a three, 3.5, somewhere in there. I don't remember exactly. I enjoyed it. It wasn't like my one of my favorites, but I definitely will be checking out book two because especially when you've only read one, I don't think it's enough especially the first one, I don't think is enough to have a good idea. So I'm really looking forward to reading this second one. The next one is called Needlecraft, Mis Nid nah. Needlecraft Mystery Series by Monica Ferris. The main character is Betsy and she is a needle shop owner. The first book is called Hooked Into Murder. When Betsy's sister is murdered, Normally, the murder is not so close to home. That's really sad. When Betsy's sister is murdered in her own needlecraft store, Betsy takes over the shop and the investigation. But to find the murderer, she'll have to put together a list of motives and suspects to figure out this killer's pattern of crime. 19 books in that series. Wow, that's a, that's a long series. That's awesome. The next one, this author has several series that, that were needlecraft, so I'm including all of them. The author is Sally Goldenbaum. The first series is called The Seaside Knitters Mystery Series. The main character is Izzy Chambers. She is the owner of a knitting shop in Massachusetts. The first book is called Death by Cashmere. It's right here. Not long after Isabel, Izzy Chambers opens up a knitting shop in the sleepy fishing town of Sea Harbor, Massachusetts. A diverse group of women begins congregating each week to form the Seaside Knitters. Izzy raises some eyebrows when she rents the apartment above her shop to Angie Archer, whose reputation for loose behavior and a quick temper has made her unpopular with many locals. But could any of them have wanted her dead? Angie's body is discovered drowned in the harbor, her long red hair tangled like seaweed in a lobster trap. An official investigation rules the death an accident. There are speculations 
of Too Many Whiskey Sours, a Slippery Wharf, a Dark Night, but Izzy and the Seaside Knitter smell something fishy. When several strange incidents occur above the shop, the women decide to take matters into their own hands. Oh my God. There's 11 books in this series. I can't wait to check this one out. It sounds right up my alley. The next series that's by her is a spinoff of that one. It is called the Seaside Knitters Society Mystery Series. Book one is called Mur Murder Wears Mittens. It is right here. It says, after retrieving fresh lobster nets from a local laundromat, Cass rushes to attend a last minute gathering with her knitting circle, but Cass can't stop worrying about the lonely boy seen hanging around the dryers and the school uniform he left behind in a hurry. When the ladies return the lost clothing the next day, they find the child and his younger sister alone, ab abandoned by their mother. The, knitting, the knitters intend to facilitate a family reunion, not investigate a crime. But the death of Dolores Cardozo, a recluse from the edge of town, throws the group for a loop, especially when the missing mother and one of their own become tied to the victim's hidden fortune and her murder. It's up to the seaside knitters to string together the truth about Dolores while preventing a greedy killer from making another move. So there are five books in that series. That sounds like not necessarily a traditional cozy, at least this plot line. Pretty intense. The last series by Sally Goldbaum, Goldenbaum sorry, is the Queen Bee's Quilt Shop series. It says the main character is Portia, who goes by Poe. She is a quilting bee member in Kansas. The first book is called A Patchwork of Clues, right here. It says on her morning, morning jog... Let me try it again. On her morning jog, Poe comes upon the dead body of antique store owner and college professor Owen Hill, sprawled across the back doorstep of Selma Parker's fabric and quilt shop on Elderbury Road. The sight of their Saturday morning quilting bee just became a crime scene. Violent crime is rare in the charming village of Crestwood, Kansas, and rumors are soon circulating that a, it's a burglary gone wrong. But who would rob a quilt shop? No. Owen Hill has been murdered. Selma and her assistant manager, Susan, are understandably at loose ends over the crime. So while the tightly knit cove of quilters who range from a new mother to a wise older lady work together on a crystal pattern quilt for Selma's store anniversary, they also get busy stitching together a patchwork of clues. This book was originally released as another title called Murder on Elberry Road. So there you go. The rest of them that I have are some of the indie books that I found. I keep saying that each time I do these. I don't know that they're indie published, but I can tell you that I didn't find them on the sites where I get the my list of spotlighting cozy um, other books. So that's why I think they're indie published. I find them mostly on Amazon and they look like there are a lot of them are KU, but we all know that there are some fabulous series on there so I definitely wanted to include them either way whether they're traditional or indie they look fabulous so they're going on my list it the first one I want to talk about is the nitty kitties mystery series <laughs> what a great name it's by Tracy Drew the first book is called knitted and knifed it is right here it says, a smart woman would dump her cheating ex, move from the city, and give herself a chance for a well-deserved do-over. A smarter woman, smarter than me anyway, wouldn't jump off the same frying pan and return to Cape Discovery, a seaside village where her family is the nuttiest of all the nutball residents. I'm a former high school counselor, middle child peacemaker, and current curator of lots of squishy fuzzy goodness at my granddad's little yarn store temporary assistant until I decide what to do with the rest of my life. There's only one naughty problem to untangle first, the knife sticking out of the most unpopular man in town. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Four books in that series. I will definitely be checking it out. The name of it alone had me. The Nitty Kitties. <laughs> it's great. The next one is a vampire knitting club series. This is by Nancy Warren. The first book is called The Vampire Knitting Club. It says, 
At a crossroads between a cringeworthy past, Todd the Toad, and an uncertain future, she's not exactly homeless, but it's close, Lucy Swift travels to Oxford to visit her grandmother. When Grand's and Dying Love to Count On, with Grand's and Dying Love to Count On, and Cardinal Woosley's Grand's Knitting Shop, to keep her busy, Lucy can catch her breath and figure out what she's going to do. Except it turns out that Grand is the undying, or at least the undead. But there's a death certificate and a will, leaving the knitting shop to Lucy, and a lot of people going in and out who never use the door, including Grand, who is just as loving as ever and prone to knitting sweaters at warp speed late at night. What is going on? When Lucy discovers that Grand did not die peacefully in her sleep, but was murdered, she has to bring the killer to justice without tipping the law and that, that there's no body in the grave. Between a hot 600-year-old vampire and a dishy detective inspector, both of whom always seem to be there for her, Lucy finds her life getting more complicated than a triple cable cardigan. The only one who seems to know what's going on is her cat. 13 books in that series. I'm going to read the first one. It sounds adorable. The reason I'm a little skeptical is just because I'm not a huge paranormal fan. I like it if um, it doesn't go too far. And too far for me is it depends on each book, right? And the way it's written. So, but I will definitely be checking out. It sounds really, really fun. That is the last one I have. I told you there's not as many as I thought that there would be, which makes me very sad. And it leads me to tell you that if you are a cozy mystery author, write some needlepoint cozy mysteries. We need more of those. <laughs> Until next time, may all your future reads be five stars. Bye, everybody.